What's going on, Paisanos? V here. Come at you guys. Well, what's another market watch today? Common question of the day. Have you bought ghosts from the past? Let me know in the comment section down below how much you bought. If you bought sealed cases, if you go to Walmart, maybe like one or two of them, or your local card shop, or if you're just waiting to go ahead and buy in the singles market. It's a really important question because ghosts in the past universally does not look good. And I think that a lot of players are kind of upset because we were all expecting better reprints in which we weren't given in this set. And looking at us from the past, I will say, obviously, the number one card everyone's, every cards everybody still wants is the Ghost Rare. We know looking back at previous Ghost Rares, everybody saw that these previous Ghost Rares are just so much money. So it only goes to show that you can only mix a Ghost Rare, it'll probably go for a lot of money. And it is. Pre sales on Ghost of the Past are already hitting Chichini Player. And we already see Dark Magician sell, well, alleged to sell for near $700 on pre sale prices. Now, if you guys have been watching this channel for a while, you know what I say about that. Pre sale prices are always the worst time to buy. With that said, collectors go in and buy during pre sale prices. They don't care, they don't understand. Uh, pre sale retail whenever the card whenever the cards available the lows and highs on the market They just don't care. They're gonna go in. they're gonna buy these cards at an early price point This is what I always tell everybody if you're getting close to the past Cool, but if you can't pre-sell it, it's kind of gonna be bad and we're looking at the pre-sale price day one right now $700 and we're gonna go ahead and look at it whenever the set actually does drop on the official release And then we're gonna give it a couple of days So check it out because the value of Ghost from Dark Magician is going to go down Obviously, I will talk about that more in this video guys new channel Please make sure to subscribe button like button comment down below. Uh, I made a video yesterday Basically talking over my uh, Shadol deck when I played in a match and I'm looking forward to doing more of those videos I'm glad a lot of people like them. I will fix the audio in those videos But I'm really glad a lot of people are taking really well to those videos because it's really fun to show my thought process as far as when I'm playing in a match and what I'm thinking about and how I evaluate the game uh, one thing I want to say real quickly before we get to the mark watch is I saw another Yu-Gi-Oh player playing and This is something that's I don't know it's off the top of my head and let me know if you guys have seen this as well Or if you guys have been around this game as well either or I, I mean the way older Yu-Gi-Oh players players who've been playing for a long while hold their cards is so different the way they slide their cards through analyze the graveyard the way they cap everything everything it's very different, and I really don't know how to explain it, and I would love it if somebody could come in, come in the comments and go, V, I see it, it's X and Y, they do this. Like, like, like a newer player does not hold the cards in the same way as a player who's experienced. And I'm not trying to say, like, day one new player versus, like, guys who went to, like, a, who won a YCS. No, no, no. I'm just talking about, like, go back and watch older Yu-Gi-Oh! videos. The older Yu-Gi-Oh! players hold cards differently than new Yu-Gi-Oh players and that's all I can say about that maybe we'll talk more about that in my live stream tonight but like on on Twitch but like that's literally all I can, it's just a very, very weird interaction versus the newer players and the way they hold their cards I don't know something about that and I, and I can't be the only one seeing this and I would love to know what you guys think in the comment section down below like I said I'm gonna be on Twitch check me out links will be in the, on the description YJ on the score Paisano and looking at Ghost in the Past you might have a couple of questions even after today's video so looking at Dark Magician coming out of Ghost in the Past, the Ghost Rare, arguably this is technically the highest rarity version. But is it? Kinda. You see, Dark Magician out of Dark Duel Stories is technically a higher version. I mean, if we have Ghost Rare over Prismatic in the rarity chart, because Ghost Rare is arguably near Starlight Rare, and I don't really know which one's high, to be honest with you, but it's like Ghost Rare, Starlight Rare, Ultimate Rare, and then we have like Prismatic Seeker Rare. These are the original kind of Prismatic Seeker Rare, so they're not like the newer versions we got in like Mega Tens. Number one. Number two, Dark Duel Stories. I mean, the Dark Duel Stories video game promo Dark Edition with a $725 market price. Well, it, there's one over here for $800, then $950, and then $1,000, and that's it. There's not many versions of Dark Duel Stories Dark Edition just floating around. And to see it here is actually kind of interesting to see, I mean, at this price point, because you barely see one of these. When was the last time you've seen or even held a promo Dark Magician from Dark Duel Stories? Looking at Dark Magician coming at Ghost in the Past, obviously, everyone's going to be opening this product. This is going to be the golden ticket. Everyone's looking for it. The minute it's open, everyone's going to want it for themselves and any extras they might even sell. Or those who bought a ton of Ghost in the Past are going to want to sell this to recoup their initial investment. Okay. So looking at the position at a ghost on the past, ghost rare, technically speaking, yes, it's uh, one of the higher rare, highest rarities, arguably the highest rarity, 
But with that said, I do think the price of this version is definitely going to go way under the $800 price point we're seeing in Dark Souls Stories version. That doesn't mean that this is a hard or bad version. It just, it, it just means that there is already a version of Dark Magician that is like the Omega version. The, the creme de la creme for Dark Magician is already there already, okay? This is still good, but it's not the creme de la creme. Hopefully that makes a lot more sense to everybody watching this video. We will see the price point of Ghost for, Ghost for Dark Magician go down as time goes on. And that's when you should really buy. But we'll talk about that when the set officially drops. But as time goes on, we'll sporadically come back in here, look at this card price, and see if the Ghost Ray is going higher or lower. My guesstimate, it'll probably go a little bit higher because of hype, and then immediately start going lower when we're getting more and more near the release date. Up next from Ghost of the Past is Evenly Match. $20. $20. Dollars. Now, I just gotta say, evenly match. I thought I had it over here, but evident. Okay, here we go. I just wanna say, evenly match is a great card. I'm glad it's finally getting a reprint. Twenty dollars is for the most part the sell price that we saw when it first came out of Dual Power and settled. Even the makers in the settle was roughly around twenty dollars. And the original print obviously being going up higher in value. And I do think the original print evenly match is still gonna go higher in value, just because it is the highest rarity version, hardest one to get. Arguably that and the, the Megatons. But Ghost of the Past evenly match, I hope this will be a lot easier to pull. I think the Ghost Rares are definitely, we can all agree, are going to be the harder rarity to get. So it's like, how much can you short print Konami is the real question. And if evenly match is not short printed, obviously the Ultra Rare comes Ghost of the Past will go down. If evenly match is short printed, Jesus. Yeah, we're fighting for crumbs over here. <laughs> Um, one thing I want to mention also with Dark Magician is the fact that there's also another version of Dark Magician that's relatively hard to find. Everyone kind of forgets about that, but I'm going to be here to remind you. Because Dark Magician at speed of pack one is insanely hard to find. With the current $93 market price, the value right now is roughly around 81 It's really low. Really, really, really low. And yet, there's threes and fours in the market, but that's it. And I do think this version, speed dual to pack one in general, has so much value. And if you're looking to get Dark Magician, if you're saying, V, I'm a collector, I gotta collect all Dark Magicians, I better hear about that speed of pack one Dark Magician, because... That's insanely hard to find, as well as the Blue Shark Dragon, which is currently roughly around two hundred and fifty dollars a copy. And I wouldn't be surprised if all these cards are going to be gone one day. This is the this is the market I talk about constantly. But I know people like get upset when I talk about like the speed of back one. But like this market is so amazing because it has original Yu-Gi-Oh TV show cards that were given only to OTS stores who ran speed duel events. Not every just OTS store did, so that makes this even more rare to get. And a lot of players don't have access to these cards. They can't besides the player, and these cards are already rising as time goes on as we move forward we move further away from tone pack one speed of pack one and collectors are gonna realize wait a minute i missed something and they're gonna go ahead and go in and grab this which is gonna further increase the price point to some really insane numbers i'm telling you now i told you dark magician girl was six dollars i told you when she was fifteen dollars she is going higher dark magician blue eyes red eyes i mean these are all tv show s cards they will rise in value due to the fact that they're gonna be harder and harder to get as time goes on keep an eye on this that's all i'm trying to say <laughs> then we have the world championship 2018 pack so one of the things that I was reading the comment section the other day. I think, I'm not sure if it was a comment section or someone messaged me on Facebook or Instagram. I got a lot of messages from you guys, which is great. I don't mind the message, but someone, someone was saying, V, people are buying the Ghost of the Pass, and they're buying it because they, they're investing in value. They're buying it because they want to hold that sealed value so it can increase as time goes on. And will Ghost of the Pass sealed value increase? More than likely, yes, absolutely. But if you're, but, but how much are you investing? And how much capital you have to invest in like a chicken sit in your egg until it hatches and make a couple of bucks? That's the question I think a lot of people kind of miss, uh, just just leave out of the equation. I could buy a sequel from the past and I'll make a ton of money in, in a year, two years, five years, ten years. And I'm, once again, I'm not disagreeing. You can. How much are you putting in to do nothing with and hoping you get money out of it? I just want to know. It's a great question, isn't it? Because Yu-Gi-Oh! market doesn't necessarily work that way. Let me explain. If anyone's like V, but we've seen sealed product go up in value. And we've seen it be sold sometimes in a high value. So it does work that way, V. Which is what people might say, right? Okay. The problem with that is, that's like looking at Yu-Gi-Oh! and saying, V, grading cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! is a huge market. Based off some sales on eBay. So... I'm going to go ahead and put a ton of money in grading cards and wait a long time and sell them. And I will go, okay, that's incorrect, but sure. Buying sealed and holding it for a long time, incorrect, but sure. And you will make money. I, I'm with you on that. 
The issue is, when you look at games like Pokemon and Magic that also do that, the price increase is super exponential for collectors, PSA graded cards, as well as sealed product. In Yu-Gi-Oh, it's nowhere near increase as far as sealed versus singles. Well, why is that? Simple. Our game's infinitely faster. Our market is infinitely faster than any market out there. Pokemon and Magic, they take a backseat to Yu-Gi-Oh. They're not even on our level, okay? So, when you have all this money, and you're saying you're going to buy sealed and somehow hold it, because everybody loves holding $10,000 off with a sealed product, everyone has space to hold sealed booster boxes in which they won't get damaged at all, right? Sure. No, and, and by the way, air, all that stuff, because cards could do that in our game. It's notor They're notorious for doing that. That little, that little thingy, that little pirate hook-looking card. So... When people go, I'll just do that. Well, the thing is, I'll, I'll market so fast. If you want to invest, why wouldn't you invest on other things that have better value? Other things that have exponential value. Three years ago, the World Championship 2018 packs were selling at, by vendors at regionals, uh, allegedly, for about 150 to $200. 2019 packs doing the same exact thing. Looking at the packs right now, the value is roughly around $2,800. That is exponential value for putting a lot of money in something and hold for the long term. But that's not even the thing that we could brag about in our game. That's just something we go, oh yeah, we have that. That's the thing we have. That's, that's always going to happen. And I cannot wait to the next envelopes because we're going to have more of this. Okay. The thing is though, the singles market, the money you put into the singles market, you get a ton of return quickly if you know what you're doing. So instead of spending $20,000 Finding a spot in your house that now is dead for a year and putting some product in there and hopefully having good ventilation, you can invest in singles, throw them in something like this maybe, or maybe get some, uh, um, hold on, get some of these, mix them around a little bit, and boom, you have an investment of cards that nobody's really looking at right now if you really want to invest. And there's alternative ways to invest in the Yu-Gi-Oh game. What I'm trying to say is, if you think you're going to buy goals from the past, and you're just going to go, yeah, V, I bought like 50 cases and I'm going to hold it. How big is your house? Because you can't put it in storage units unless they have good ventilation. And if you put it in storage units, hopefully it doesn't get rained out or anything like that. You know, robbed or anything like that. Or you just miss your storage payment. And Joe Schmo, Hillbilly Bob, cracks your storage bin and gives guys 250 bucks for it. I don't know. I just... The sealed market to me is a market I don't really like or agree with in this game. I acknowledge there's definitely value, but what you have to go through to get that value is absolutely ludicrous where you can go do it proper channels and make infinitely more money, infinitely faster, and infinitely more intelligent. So I don't like the sealed market in this game. With that said, I personally am looking to get Dark Magicians, Ghost Risk. Why? Why would I do that? Did I say there's another higher rarity? Sure. Did I say it's worth a lot more money? Absolutely. But Ghost Risk Dark Magician will be worth money in time goes on. So... Will you buy seal goals from the past? Stack them up in your house somewhere? Mom, grandma, wife, sister, whoever you live with, yelling at you when you get rid of this goddamn product. When you get rid of this goddamn product. Do investments, mom! Like, or you buy a bunch of goals for Dark Magicians, okay? The hot card of the set, arguably. Double sleeve them, put them in top loaders, pop them away, and then sell them and make bank. I, I don't know. I just like one way over the other. People have people are gonna have their choices and they're gonna do whatever they want. And even after what I just said, which I find very to be very logical, people are still gonna care about holding sealed product and doing that stuff. And that's fine. That's hey, there's different avenues to make money in this game. I just don't agree with that one because I feel like the amount of what you put in isn't it doesn't equate to what you pull out of it. Whereas other things like the worship envelopes obviously are. And by the way, if you put a lot of money into this and don't own any of these, you're kind of doing it wrong. <laughs> then we have Dragoonies. Now, listen, I think Ghost of the Past, with all the Dragoonie reprints, is definitely something to look into. Dragoonies is definitely a very interesting decor. Um, I, 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 I've been told, and I'm constantly told, even when we were in Teaser Ghost of the Past forever ago when it, was, when it was announced, from a ton of plays, that Dragoonies is one of the very few decors in this set that has immediate promise. We don't know about the new stuff. We have zero idea what it can do. But we know Dragoonies has... Um, that kind of promise, and people are really excited about it, and the market is going crazy over it. I mean, Gay Dirge over here is roughly around 60 bucks. Phalanx is only two listings, roughly around $29 for the dual tone versions. Ducks, 24 and of course, all the new ones looking relatively cheap right now, besides Remus, which is roughly around $25. 
Now, that makes it higher than... So Remus is higher than Evenly Match, but $25. And the box itself costs 30 Something about that doesn't add up if you kept an eye on it. Number 39, Astro, Utopia Astro, with a $351 market price. is roughly around $500. Actually, re realistically, uh, it's roughly around $525 for Astro Utopia. Now, this could be because 2011 format is starting to become more popularized, more players are getting involved, and they want to play with the highest rated Utopia, and they want to play Astro. It's no big deal. I like Astro. It's found jobs for Astro. I don't like it that much. Uh, I'll stick my toe terminal. But this is definitely one if you have this card. It's five. It's over $500 for this card. Good for you. Seriously. Now, once again, this is a $500 card. Okay. You got 10,000 dragons, and a, ba and a box of Battles of Legends Armageddon is, well, we'll take it to heart, I think it's before it's at two hundred and seventy-five dollars. Sure. Does anyone have Steel Battles of Legends booster boxes lying around? How many? Case is three grand. Wow, that's a lot for a case. There were only like six hundred bucks. I mean, the envelope was like two, but you know, whatever. Uh, six hundred bucks. How many of these you have lying around? I think OTS stores may have these lying around. Specific, specific players. I would love to be around your dinner table as your dad and mom explain to you. Why you have this? There's my investments, mom, and I get that. Once again, and they're gonna get that when you sell it, and you're gonna make a lot of money. But a lot of sip boxes to have chilling in your room, like bro, you gotta wake up, put your, you know, put your um, your glasses on off, you know, it's laying on top of a case of bottle of legends, about three of them stacked, and you're like one day. I don't know. It's really weird with the sale market, and that also has to say that once again, if this was to sell, that's a whole different story. Okay. Looking at uh, Genesis Impact, even though these collector's rares were pretty bad compared to Toon Chaos, Genesis Impact is a pretty good set. Despite the fact that booster boxes are roughly around $55, Genesis Impact cards, like collector's rares Nightmare Unicorn, are roughly around $80. Nightmare Phoenix, $71. The, the Live Twins, oh, they're, it's hard to even look at those prices because they keep fluctuating constantly. Look at Artemis. I bought mine for, I think, $48. It's currently up to almost near $70 a copy for the collector's rare version of Artemis. You want the ultra rare Artemis? No big deal. It originally was like 5 to 6 Now that bad boy is roughly around, well, bad girl, $14. Uh, it's really crazy. Even right in Nova, with the release of the new set stuff coming out, uh, it's roughly around $31. Not bad, to be honest with you. The booster box is relatively low right now, and... and Fine, I'll take it off. Even though this, like, I gotta put it back on, whatever. Even though, um, I mean, they're 54 bucks. Even though this is a really good set. And if you are looking to buy Sealed, I guess you would do just as Impact. I don't know. I don't, I just, Sealed's a whole different beast that I don't like to really tackle. But I want to explain why I think it's nowhere near as good as buying singles. Like, if you bought Book of Moon, Ultimate Red, OTS Phone Pack 13, you're pretty happy right now. Especially with the fact that the card, roughly with an $89 market price, has already hit almost near $100 a copy. You probably are feeling really good right now. Hey! Nowhere near as good as those who bought Ultimate Rare Skate Code at an OTS Phone Pack 8 for, I think, the lowest, I could be wrong, $26. The market price has this card roughly around $84. And don't worry about it. It's at $81. Of course, that is after these two sell. goes back up to $85. And then after that place, full place that's gone, we're looking at roughly $94 with shipping for Ultimate Rare Skate Code. It was $26 for Ultimate Rare Skate Code. Now, in case anyone's a little bit confused, this card's using gold format. <laughs> Goat format. Name and the title. When I first heard about Scapegoat coming out of OTS Storm Pack 8, and seeing the fact that everyone's like, oh man, I go, you guys are insane. This card's amazing. The fact that this card's coming out of OTS Storm Pack 8 is a blessing. The price immediately tanks down, and sporadically, especially for those who watch my channel for a while, know that I love coming back here and going, hi, this is your monthly, bi monthly reminder Ultimate Scapegoat at OTS Storm Pack 8 is gonna get bought out one day. That's not even today. This ain't even a bought out price, by the way. There's a bunch of listings still on TC Player. Uh, mostly play sets, as you can see, guys can see over here. This guy has 12 of them at $126. And then we have a bunch of them, and then the card kind of bombs out roughly around $250. Fun fact, it's going to be worth $250 one day. And that day, as, as, as we look at the crazy speed of the Yu-Gi-Oh! market, and with more cards coming out, and more players getting involved in the game, and getting involved in, in, in a way in which they're investing because they want to not spend bank, you know, front-end price, nobody wants to buy Scapegoat Ultimate Rare for $250 a copy. So people are getting involved now, knowing the fact that this card will ultimately go up higher in the market in the future. And that is what is going to be happening with this card. So I might say, well, V, Konami can make a Starlight Rare Scapegoat. That will kill the Ultimate Rare one. Yeah. No, no, 
Like, look at Effect Veil or DD Crow Ultima Rare. Those cards have only went up in value. And you might say, well, DD Crow? I mean, yeah, it makes sense. The card, you know, it's being used. Yes, Effect Veil is not, though, but it still holds value. Why is that? It's a very good question to ask. The question is because even though it's Starlight Rare, it's very hard to find, Ultima Rare is also really hard to find. And people are buying it. And look at Ultima Rare Scapegoats. I don't care if they make a Starlight Rare version. I don't think you care either. Even made a Ghost Rare, it doesn't matter. Did they make a Ghost Rare? No, it doesn't matter. Ultima Rare Scapegoat at LTS 1 Pack 8. Obviously, it's going to be one everyone's going to be wanting to get as time goes on, as we get new players. As players go from competitive Yu Gi Oh! to Gold format, they're going to want this card. And the price point of this card is going to rise exponentially due to it. Doo doo. Abyssal at uh, LTS on pack 13 with a $66 market price is roughly around $65. This card for a long time was stabilizing around $50. And now it's rising in value. Why is that? Well, simple. Even though this card isn't seeing as much play, it's Abyss Dweller. This card's insane. Detach one, your opponent's graveyard. Yeah, put that bad boy to sleep for a turn. Don't get rid of Abyss Dweller? No big deal. Do here next turn. Like, that's an insane effect. Even when this card first debuted, everyone was going, wow, super rare? Lucky us. Well, luckily for us, the card's ultimate rare, and the value of the ultimate rare at OTS 1 Pack 13 has already risen Despite it coming out not too long ago, once again, OTS Torn Pack 13. As time goes on, the value of the soil will keep increasing due to the fact that it's harder to get. And it's OTS Torn Pack 13. Not necessarily the best OTS pack. I mean, you know, you had Book of Moon in there. That's pretty good. We just talked about that. Trap Chicks by Facilia. Everyone wants one of those. Body Mush Shark coming in here actually was really interesting due to the fact that besides this version, for a long while we had Gold and Secret Rare, and that's what you got. <laughs> Deep Sea Diva coming in is pretty cool, and, uh, you know, a lot of good reprints in here. Sure. Not memorable. Soul Church isn't that Secret of Eternity has only a solo print listings. Once again, Secret of Eternity, Secret Rare, with less than $2 market price. The value of this card on Limited is roughly around 2 bucks. In fact, for editions, with shipping included, Three to four dollars. Now, the thing about this card that I really like is the fact that nobody's looking at it right now. One. Number two, it came as a Secret of Eternity, as a secret rare with no other printings. That's number two. Number three, the card is dirt cheap. A dirt cheap secret rare with definitely potential in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Not bad. And I wouldn't be surprised if this card was to get bought out eventually. Um, as well as, you know, especially if Konami keeps at this crazy pace in which they don't reprint these kind of cards. They had the opportunity to, and goes on the past, but they had to do other cards. Like the Ultimate Rare cards out of OTS that just recently came out. They had to do those, you know, because why not? Dante Travel to Burning Abyss at a Dose Alliance with a near $18 market price. Well, I mean, unlimited versions are around 15 bucks if you want Secret Round Limited. Sure. I mean, you can get Lamborghini Doors on an old school Toyota Corolla. You could do that. But why? <laughs> if you want a first season version of Dante Traveler Burning Abyss, um, the starting value is roughly around $25. Not bad. There's one in one listing. After that, the card price kind of starts going up in value. About $30. Listen, I don't know what you're doing with, with, with any of this information, but I'm telling you right now, Burning Abyss is still a really good deck. I've been saying it for a long time, and I said it, I think I said it on my stream. I'm not sure if I said it in this Markross as well, but I always like Burning Abyss because you get a trap version of Burning Abyss, and they are really good against the Dulls, which I think are like the two uh, uh, best like decks in the meta, arguably at the, at the moment. Well, I'm, what I meant, my, my, realistically, it's Dragons and, Bur and Shadals, but I do think Burning Abyss can be one of the topics in the meta, but nobody's really playing them right now. But I've been saying it for a long while, when this card was like $4, why is this card so cheap? This card's insane. That it's gonna be good again, and here we are right now with Graf and Seer fully unlocked. Listen, I think uh, Burning Abyss can come back. Uh, I think Burning Abyss is really good. I think a lot of players who are kind of debating on on the fence about it. If you have this core, even a, any other Re Rarity core, even the Lamborghini Dolce Corolla core, test it out. Try it at your locals. You'd be surprised. It's still a phenomenal deck. Then we have Agent of Entropy, Uranus. This card with a $4 market price is almost bought out on the market. I don't know why. Zero reason why. Um, but it's almost bought out. Now, this is the Primal Origin Special Edition version. And it also came out Common Dose Alliance. But uh, you have an Ultra Rare Uranus. Cool. It's worth a couple of bucks. Pretty interesting, actually. Gear Giant X is another card. Or Gig X, I should say. Because someone's going to go V. It's not Giant. There's no I. I get it. But, like, it sounds way cooler as Gear Giant X. Gear Gigant X just sounds like my tongue just like fell asleep halfway through this. Anyway, this secret I had a return of Duelist uh, with a $7 market price on limited versions of roughly around, well, 
They're about eleven dollars. I'm gonna say twelve dollars. And then when you go to first edition versions, you see one over here at seventeen, then twenty-one, and they're sold out. <laughs> Gear Giant X is definitely a card I think that a lot of players pretty much forgot about. And rightfully so. The deck, the card hasn't done nothing in a long while. But due to the fact that it's done nothing in a long while, it does not does exclude the fact that it's a secret rare and it's the hardest version to get of the card. We'll also come out of Return of Duelist. Yet another phenomenal set. And if you want any other version, next highest version is what? The Rad and Maximum Gold? The Super Rad and Mega Tins? No. The highest version is the Return of Duelist version. Secret rare, original print of this card. Only two versions that exist right now. Um, let me just add, hold on a second, boom, boom, okay, yeah, only two first edition versions exist right now that are playable, and once those are gone, I don't think people are going to be cracking open booster boxes of Return of Duelist, call it a hunch. Up next, we have Rescue Cat. Now, I talked about this card a while ago, and how crazy the common versions were when they were hitting $10, I was like, that's insane, that's crazy, um, Burn Up's a fun deck, but $10 for common, it's whatever, yeah, okay. They keep rising in value, and the listings keep diminishing. Now, you might go, V, play me return, you got a ton of these. Yeah, with an average $14 market price, the unlimited versions are $13. If you want the first edition version, first edition version, that's $13. That's lower than a $14 market price. Buy as many as possible, says somebody who has no idea the fact that this card is a common in Flaming Eternity. Now, obviously, you want the highest rarity version. It's going to be the Turtle Pack Booster 3. With a $72 market price, the value, $85. When I first looked about this card, it was $47, I want to say, $48. Uh, yeah, it's not that anymore. Hey, listen, you can always get the Duelist Saga version. No big deal. We talked about this the other day. It's roughly around $25. And you're playing Burnup, you're probably going to want to play three of these. This could have been a bird. This could have been a Ghost in the Past, Konami. You could have made that a thing. But you didn't. And we have, let's see, two, three. Three commons and one rare at absorbent ab prices. We can negotiate on, on Dual Saga. Sure, I guess so. It's a good set. We can we can't negotiate on Booster Promo Pack Booster 3. That card should be a zillion dollars. It doesn't matter. You're not gonna find any more of those packs lying around. But commons? Three different variations of commons being that high in value? Oh yikes. <laughs> Look at that Gatling Dragon. Another weird thing happened as well. If you pulled any OTS from pack 7, Gatling Dragon, the common vert card out of that one with $9 market price, is roughly around $12. $12. I think this is used in Go Format as well um, in, the, uh, in, in their you know, extra deck. Yeah, uh, sure. Is it worth $12? No. No. No, it's not. <laughs> hey, if you want another version, you get the version out of Legendary Collection 4, Joey's World. No big deal. That one is roughly... $15 a copy. Of course it is. Why would it not be? $15 for a common? Yeah. No big deal. I got you, bro. Like, cool. And then we have Joel and Lockbird at an OTS 20 pack 8. With a $99 current market price, the value of old Joel and Lockbird is roughly around $190. Now, this card for the longest while was around 50. I said it will go, I said it will go beyond the, beyond 120. It hit 80. It's still there for a while. And I'll be honest with you, it started going lower than 80. And I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute, is it gonna go back down to 50? Drone Lockbird going back down to 50? No way. Impossible. And then I forgot about Drone Lockbird. Just forgot about it. I was still I'm still very convinced that it will go past 120. And that day's probably about today. Maybe he's been doing this for the past couple of days. I haven't checked on it. I'll be honest with you. I forgot about it. But Joel Lockbird is $190 a copy for Ultimate Rare. Now this is the, this doesn't describe the fact that Joel Lockbird has a bunch of other rarities, including Draw Bird. Yeah, it won't do the same effect, but it looks really cool. Uh, also, Draw Bird from the 2011 packs is worth more than most of the most of the other versions of Joel Lockbird. Fun fact. Okay. So you can get the gold version roughly around ten dollars. You can get the common roughly around ten dollars. You get the rare roughly around ten dollars. You get the ultra rare, which why would you get the get the uh, gold rare? Well, I guess alternate art, but nevertheless, roughly around ten dollars. The super rare at OTS on pack one roughly around twelve dollars. And if you spend a little more than twelve dollars, uh, you can buy draw lockboard right now for the low, 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 low price of hundred and ninety dollars. Mm. Here's the question: If anyone holding ultra rare drawn lockboard, do you sell it? Do you? Don't get me wrong, I'm in the same boat with you. I want to place it as card. I don't know if I should sell this or not. Because <laughs> $198 times 3 is $570 for three drawn lockbirds. What? 
Don't worry, this card's a phenomenal card. But for almost there, six hundred dollars. Well, you know, let's, let's lowball it because after fees and all that stuff, we'll say five hundred dollars cheaply. Five hundred dollars for a place that draw a lockbird. It, at one point, it was fifty each. Now it's one hundred ninety each. <laughs> but let's say five hundred bucks for a place that draw a lockbird. Let's say you invested one hundred fifty dollars. Good money. Good money for three cards that you can throw in a box. Um. Do you sell these and buy what? The super brands? I would buy them. If, if I had to get rid of my Ultimate Red Drone Lockbirds, let's just say I had to sell them because they're insanely overpriced. Uh, which version would I get? Okay. I would probably buy three of the super rares. I don't like the ultra rares. They're not bad, but they're super bright. I'm not getting gold rares. I talked about gold rares already. Gold rares, please stop with that. Um, but I'd probably get the super rares. I mean, how, how many are there listed on TCG Player? $14 market price. It's kind of down. Roughly around $12, $13. Not bad. They look kind of clean. I like that's what I like about the super rares out of the OTS uh, pack. They were very clean. Not that the ultra rare isn't bad, but it's so like I don't know. Too much coloration. Like I don't know. I like super rares. Super rare this. I'm really back and forth with certain cards and depending on certain rarities on certain sets. And this situation, even though the ultra rare would be the second highest rarity, I think super rare is much better. Um, and the premium gold rare is just. I mean, I wish I made an alternate art premium gold rare drawing lockbird. And then make that as an ultimate rare and like an OTS pack. That'd be kind of cool. That'd be really cool. But then again, Konami would literally, by, by doing that, would literally be saying to everybody, Ash Ross from Joy Spring, Infinite Permits, even the matchup with like the talents, drawing Lockbird. We're doing drawing Lockbird. Like that's what Konami would do. And you'd sit there going, all right, sure. They did this already with Cyber Dragon, so I'm not sure they're going to do this in a new OTS pack. They can, but God, would they really do that? Hopefully not. This is Empire Zones. I really appreciate you guys watching my videos. Please make sure to hit the subscribe button, like button, comment down below. Make sure to follow me on Twitch. Links will be down below in the description. I really appreciate it. And uh, you guys have a great day.